All right, today we're going to be making a triad spinner out of purple heartwood. This is the natural color of the wood, beautiful purple wood. Unfortunately, once it gets exposed to UV light, it has a tendency to turn a little bit on the brown side, but still very pretty wood. So, first thing we're gonna do is Go to the website, DIYFidgetSpinners.com. Print out the free designs that I have up there. And we're going to cut that out. Doesn't have to be perfect again. We're just going to be slicing and dicing it up anyway. But we want to get it close enough that we can see the wood underneath. And get a good... view of what we're doing here. Next we just take our play school grillu glue on the back here. And we're going to place it in a corner. And flatten it out, make sure that's dry. Let that dry for a few minutes and we'll be back. All right, now what we're going to do is use the old jigsaw here to cut out the pattern. Scroll saw, rather, not the jigsaw. And there you go. <clears throat> so what I did was I left about a one millimeter, two millimeter boundary around the outside. And what I'll do is I'll just use the band sander or hand sander, orbital sander to get that down to that line. Um, it's a little bit easier with a sander than it is with a scroll saw. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take off some of these corners around the ends here and sand down to those lines. Before I do that, I'm going to make sure that I've got my dust mask.
All right. Now we got the basic outline sanded down. We're going to move on to the drill. We're going to drill out this center hole here with a 21 inch. And then we'll sand down or um, drill out those based on whatever bearing we've got in place. And we'll be back once I get the drill press set up. All right, so what we're going to do here is in the center is crosshairs, reticle. And at the bottom of this, there's a little brad point tip right there. You can see that. We're going to align that tip with the center of that circle right there. Kind of tap it. Make sure you get it in the center. And that's it right there. So you can see what I did was I just left a little indentation. All right? Makes it easier to find it, and then you can drop down. <clears throat> now we know that this is in the center. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to hold this down and drill it out. So now, drilled it out most of the way, but we don't want this wood to tear out. So what we're going to do is we're going to just flip it over. Align the hole from that brad point. All right, align the hole, drop it down, hold in place, and it won't need a whole lot. There we go. So now we've got a nice clean all there with no tear out. Now it's time for the outside bearings. So around the outside we're going to put these 17 7 sixteenths of an inch ball bearings. So that means I need a drill bit about that size. Which I happen to have. However, before I go and drill holes, this is a 7 sixteenth. Before I drill this hole into the wood, I'm going to do a test hole in a scrap piece of wood just to make sure. I'm going to get that set up and we'll be back. Now we just test the ball bearing. And that will fit, that is a perfect fit right there. So we'll take that ball out and we will drill holes. All right, so what I have here is a jig. And the whole point of the jig is to hold the piece in place so that we can drill these and make sure that they're exactly equidistant from the center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off basically just held together by two lag bolts and inside of the platform for my drill press I'm going to put that in up through the bottom Put the piece on, and then we're going to line this up.
All right. Sure, we're in the center of that dot. Looks pretty good. Now we turn it on. And before I start drilling, what I typically do is do a little tap. Just to make sure that we're in the center. And you can see I'm off. I'm just going to move this over a little bit. Tap again. There you go, that looks pretty good. So now we're going to start drilling. this line up the next hole should have some perfectly drilled holes it's pretty good got a little tear out right there but we'll be able to sand that out now you notice right here and here we've got a little bit of a difference in there we will even this out when we're sanding and to make sure that they are properly sized we're going to use a set of calipers and we'll make sure that we match that side to this side and then we'll do the same thing over here. So let me get this next part set up and we'll be back. All right, so what I did was I went ahead, I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera or not, but I went ahead and marked out approximately where I need to go down, sand down to. All right, so I did that on each one. Looks like I'm a little bit shy just on the left side of the hole on each one. That's probably because I'm right-handed and the left side when I'm going like this, I couldn't see it. So. I'm going to sand that down and um, might bring this in just a little bit more right there and there. But I'll make sure I measure this, see which one is the shortest one, um, and make sure that they're all equal as well. Then what I'll do is I'll make sure that this distance, this distance, and this distance are all the same. So one, two, three, make sure those are all the same too. And we're talking about fractions of a millimeter here, so... Um, I just got to be slow and take my time. So I'm going to put my air filter mask on and we'll get started. All right, that's pretty close. I think we can do that the rest with a hand when we uh, do the block sanding. Um, but now I'm going to clean up the face here and clean up this, get this stuff off of there. So. Notice I am facing the grain of the wood with in line with the, the sander here. So.
All right, looks pretty good. Now we're going to start rounding over this edge right here. Let's see if we can't get a little bit straightened out right there, but yep, we'll start rounding out this edge here. Okay, let me get set up for that. All right, now the fun begins. We've got 60 grit, 100 grit, 150 and 220. So we're going to start with the 60 grit, take down some of these edges, and have some fun. This is the part that I hate the most. I hate sanding. <clears throat> I'm just Cutting this down to a little bit of a uh, size that's a little bit more manageable. And I'm going to take it in my hand. I'm going to curl the paper like that and just kind of drag it back and forth in there. Not worried too much about what way the grain is going because I am going to be going down to 220 grit. And you can see that's already starting to take some stuff down. I'm going to pause this and uh, we'll show you what it looks like when it's all done here. All right, so after about 10, 15 minutes of sanding with the 60 grit, you can see all the sharp edges are gone and it's looking pretty smooth. We've still got some dark spots on the edge, but those will clean up too once I get to the next grit. But looks look looking pretty good right now. So let me get to the next, next grit, which is 100, and we'll start sanding. This won't take nearly as long. All right, so here it is after the 100 grit sanding. See a lot of these uh, black areas are starting to come out now, and starting to get a good shape. So now we're going to go to the 150 and then 220. All right, so now we're just about ready for the final sanding. But before we do that, what we want to do is we want to take a wet rag and wipe off the dust. Get them out of the nooks and crannies and stuff. And what this is also going to do, look how purple that is now. Look how gorgeous that wood is. <clears throat> what that's going to do is any wood fibers that are kind of sticking up on the surface, you can feel them now. You won't be able to see them, but you can feel them. Um, now you're going to take... 220 grit or even maybe a three or four hundred grit and just gently rub that off and this is going to give it a real smooth finish here. So I'll just give it a nice little once over over the entire body. You can see those little fibers right there and the, it's a little bit different than the, the, the dust that comes off. Notice I am going with the grain right now. Make sure to get those green, those green fibers off. I'm 
So I'm bouncing all over the frame here. Sorry about that. Trying to get this thing sanded. All right. Looks good. Looks good. Give it a quick. So now it's just getting the dust off. Wow, that thing is smooth right now. All right, let's get ready for final assembly. All right, so I've got a dark woof bearing here. I've got the spinner body and I've got three ball bearings. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little utility knife here and there's this little shield. I'm gonna take that off and take it off on the, on the other side too. Then you can just, usually this, since this is a ceramic bearing, there's usually not too much grease on here. It still spins pretty okay, but um, I'll still run this under hot water. I don't have to worry about it rusting or anything because it is ceramic and ceramic doesn't rust. This is a hybrid bearing, so this race, the inside race and the outside race, which is what the bell bearings sit in, they are metal, but those little balls right there are actually ceramic. And then on the back, you can see this little nylon retainer clip. And that holds all the little balls in place. So these, get it out of the way. These are going to go right in those little holes right there. And hopefully they'll fit. You do not want to force these balls in this hole. So they are not going to fit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a dowel right here and we're going to put some sandpaper around the dowel like that and we're going to work it back and forth in those holes until they fit so I'll be back so if you remember we drilled this out with a 7 16 this is a 5 16 dowel. And I've got a little piece of sandpaper wrapped around it. And we're just gonna spin that around. You can also use it on a drill, but we don't have a whole lot to go. So I'm just gonna be patient and do it by hand here. Spin it around. You do wanna take this off every once in a while. Come in from the other side. So I like working with these exotic hardwoods. This is a purple heartwood, as I mentioned before. And these are really sturdy woods. If you were to do this same piece in, in pine or birch or anything like that, you definitely get splits here and here. Um, notice the grain of the pattern. This would probably break off right there. So that's why I like working with these exotic woods. They're a lot harder to, a lot more sturdy. Plus, they look pretty. All right, now we've got it in there. We're gonna put the bearing in, and because I use a 22 millimeter, it's got a little something in it. And I'm gonna wash, there it goes. Got a piece of sandpaper in there. Sand, not good for sand ba ball bearings. There you go. Pretty good spin time there, just for... Might want to put a little bit of um, glue on this bearing. It seems a little bit loose here. So instead of glue, what I might do is just use a little bit of tape. Right around that outside of the bearing there. It does have a bit of a wobble too. You can see. Sometimes the wobble is caused. There you go. See how that is sticking out right there? That's what's causing the wobble. And that's because the bearing is a little bit loose in there. So, yeah, much more stable. 
All right, so let me um, forget what I was going to do next, honestly. Still got to paint this thing up and uh, get some tape and everything, and we'll be good to go. All right, so what I did was I just took a piece of electrical tape. I'm not sure if you can see it, it's black. And wrap that, cut it to size. And then wrapped it around the outside there. And that should hold this bearing in a lot better than it was. Yeah, it's definitely tighter now. Sticking out a little bit there, I'll be able to fix that. All right, much better. So now we got to figure out what we're going to do with buttons. So hold on, and I'll be right back. All right, I went to the hardware store, found a couple different options for making some buttons. And first option was I found this kind of aluminum cylinder with a hole in the middle. So you could put that in there. You'd probably have to glue it up because it does slide around too much. And then you'd have to cut this aluminum to the size. And you could put in some little barrel screws, something like that, in the ends. And that could be a nice button. Another option is to just use a barrel screw. Barrel screw basically has a screw on one side, male screw, and female screw, and then those two just screw together. So basically it's a double-headed screw. Just like that. Didn't like this because it was a little bit smaller, and this barrel was not 5 sixteenths. So what happens is it kind of bounces around a little bit. So the last option I found was these little plastic retainer clips and they fit in there perfectly they're 5 16 so just took them on the jigsaw and cut them down a little bit and they fit in there perfectly not much of a button but that's all I really wanted for this I wanted to keep it nice and clean and I'll just drop in a couple drops of uh, glue and we'll be good to go this is a new glue that I found it's the go-to glue a little bit less expensive than the, the super glue stuff but it seems to hold really well and it's also good under heat you do not want to get the glue inside the bearing now avoid that and it sets up very quickly let's keep that rolling make sure it doesn't leak into that There you go. Let that sit for a minute or two. This stuff really dries really fast. It sets up in um, 30 seconds and it's dry in um, five minutes and then it will completely set up in about 24 hours. So you can start using your spinner in just a few minutes, but it's Loctite and comes in a much bigger bottle than the other stuff does. So let's give that a few minutes to dry and we'll be back. All right, so here's one of my favorite parts of the whole process is watching the dramatic transformation. Now, just as a little disclaimer here, I took off the electrical tape and just went with some plain cellophane tape to hold this bearing in. And the reason was the, um, the electrical tape just was really old, <laughs> probably five, six years old, and it just wasn't holding in place. So... Take a little bit of linseed oil, put it on a rag, and you'll notice the difference here. Look at that. Just pops it out. Gives it that nice wet shiny look without having an oil smell. It's got a nice natural smell on it. Now watch on the purple side. Um, 
Look at that green just pop out. It's got nice, nice gorgeous white stripes in there. The edges. There you go. Oops. There you go. The uh, triad spinner there. Once these bearings are broken in, they'll probably spin for a minute and a half or two minutes or so. They're okay. Still haven't found a set of bearings that I really love. So if you know any of any, please leave a comment and I'll be definitely uh, be thankful for that. All right. There's another spinner for you. Hope you enjoyed today's show. Take care.